passage is about the pandemic, the changes that happened uh, during the pandemic and something about how it affected the way we think and the way we take decisions. Let's first summarize the passage. Uh, there was a lot of big talk during the pandemic as we, off, as we used that eerie combination of silence and panic to re-evaluate our priorities. So what happened during the pandemic is there was a combination of silence and panic. And this eerie, weird combination made us re-evaluate our priorities. What do I really want in life? What am I doing? What do I really want to do? Which one is highest on my list of what I want to do? So re-evaluate your priorities. Fear of change evaporates when everywhere you look, there is upheaval you didn't choose. So your fear of change evaporates when you see everything changing fast around you and you don't seem to have control over it. You didn't choose to have that change around you. Why not do that thing that you've always wanted to do? Chuck in your job, get an iguana. Practically speaking, it was a new world in which life of the city was all downside and no up. So he said it was a... The pandemic was introduced us or gave us a weird world where life in the city was all downside and no up, had seemed to have no positives. Suddenly, the relationships you thought would endure till death parted uh, wouldn't last five more minutes. Suddenly, marriages broke. You thought that that was a partnership for life, but you found that it just broke. At the same time, the person you met on Wednesday was now living with you. So relationships change. The pointlessness of your job leapt out at you. But was it the work itself? What's the point of doing work? You kept asking, what's the sense in doing all this? That pointlessness of your job leapt out at you. But the author is asking, is it the work itself or is it a proxy for modern life? Okay, is, is it... Was it the pointlessness of work itself or was it just about life in general? Okay, so a very, uh, some philosophical deep thoughts there. Especially in 2020, this all looked as though it was going to bring about huge life changes. So in 2020, after a year of going through all that, he says it looked as though all these changes are, were going to effect even greater changes. By August of that year, so he's now talking about the changes. By August of that year, one in seven Londoners wanted to leave the city. Nationally, four in ten people were more inclined to look for houses in rural, rural locations than they were before. Developers in Manchester, Leed, Leeds and Liverpool were panicking. In, the early 2020, in early 2021, one estate agent noted the largest exodus out of London in a generation. People just went out of London. They, they preferred rural locations and uh, places, developers, uh, builders, house builders in Manchester, Leeds, Liverpool, all these are cities were panicking because people didn't seem to like the fact of living in the city. They were preferring the quieter countryside. Meanwhile, inquiries to divorce lawyers sold. So one was this mass exodus from cities to villages in England. They're called the country. And the second part here is that divorces increased. Inquiries to divorce lawyers sold. One firm, Stone, Stowe Family Law, reported an increase of 162% between 2020 and 2021. As inquiries fed into actual divorces, the courts and tribunal service showed 3,000 divorces registered in the week 6th April 2022. The average for the year before was 2,000. So there were lots of inquiries for divorce. And when these divorces, ones which went from inquiry to actually filing the divorce case, there were 3,000 registered in one week in 6th April 2022. The year before it was 2,000. So see the, the leap in the number of divorces filed. When the dust had settled, so these are the effects of the pandemic. Now let's see. When the dust had settled, however, when things had settled down, however, a lot of changes were not as stark as all that. It wasn't that big an upheaval as you thought. A lot of changes weren't as stark as all that. Urban life recovered its luster. People started, the city suddenly started looking better. 
it's recovered its luster luster means shine and many of those ex learn londoners turn out to be young people who had just temporarily moved back with their parents liverpool ended up with a higher population than before people largely didn't leave their jobs if they did it was only to move to another one so it's not like they gave up jobs altogether they largely didn't if they did it was only a job change okay a timeless choice rates of economic inactivity were unchanged if there was a labor shortage blame blexit marital breakdown turned out to be more complex possibly thanks to the introduction of no fault divorce or covid related financial pressure rather than the pandemic yes the rate of divorces increased but marital breakdown was a big change but he is saying that is not because of the pandemic it was maybe thanks to the recent introduction of the no fault divorce or covid related financial pressures it was not pandemic related uh, it was not the pandemic itself that caused break up in marriages it was the financial pressures due to the pandemic one thing or 3.2 million things to be precise that covid can take credit for is an influx of pets lot of changes marriage he has talked about uh, city to village uh, city to countryside and coming back after the pandemic marriages of course breakdown of marriages continue but he says that's because more because of financial pressures but one more influx of pets everybody started having pets at home there was a huge rush for animals during the pandemic a staggering 33% households now have at least one dog nonetheless this decade has thrown up some weird conditions in which to make a major decision see how uh, beautifully he ended this paragraph he said but one thing huge increase in the number of pets owned by people 33% then he says this decade has thrown up some weird conditions in which to make a major decision now comes the main part of the paragraph where he talks about decisions he says you would expect some people to have regrets right sometimes you take a decision and during the pandemic after whatever uh, about uh, uh, moving from a city about a marriage partner about a about a pet but he says you would expect some people to have some regrets right any choice made in the middle of a crisis will have impulsive elements we, we were i mean in a crisis you cannot be cool calm and composed there's always and if you take a major decision when you're in, uh, a crisis is a crisis is an abnormal situation so he says any choice made during in the middle of a crisis will have an impulsive element uncharacteristic thought patterns surely some of those choices will have turned out badly so some of the decisions that we made choices we made on the basis of uh, uh, more impulsively because we were in the middle of the crisis would have been would have turned out to be bad decisions or bad choices well yes and no so basically he's saying during the pandemic people made good and bad choices yes and no both regrets does regret doesn't quite work like that fushia serios seroy a psychology professor at durham university durham university says so there's a lady there's a psychology professor who talks about how does regret work when you make a bad decision there's a you, you regret it right so during the uh, pandemic we were it was an abnormal situation it was a a period of emo- emotional turmoil and impulse and emotion when it plays part of a decision obviously certain bad decisions would have been made so he says yeah well yes and no to that and then he quotes fushia a, a, prof- a professor who says this there's a natural human reaction to mistakes or decisions that we might regret initially he says yes the natural reaction is we might regret a decision initially oh, why did i do that they create a cognitive dissonance a disparity between our thoughts and our behavior leaving that gap open this change between our thoughts and our behavior if you leave this gap open 
creates aversive feelings and we try to close it. So it creates feelings of aversion, aversive feelings. So we try to close the gap between our thoughts and our behavior. They should be more aligned to each other. If we can close the gap with our behavior, reverse the decision, then we'll do that. So that there's a disparity between our thought and our action. We've taken our decision. Now we are regretting it. So there is this cause of the disparity, a cognitive dissonance between our thoughts and our behavior. So what do we do? One is we try to bridge the gap. And how do we do that? By reversing the decision. Okay, change it. Go back. Reverse the decision. Then we'll do that. If it's possible, we'll do that. If it is irre irreversible, it is much easier to change the thoughts. So either we change the decision or we change our thoughts so that uh, that regret we can overcome. Clear? Which of the following best describes the author's opinion about the various changes that are taking place in people's lives because of COVID-19? So first the author gives all the changes, people moving from cities to the countryside, London, mass exodus, Liverpool, all these places. Then she talks about a lot of these uh, marriages breaking up, influx of pets. Then what does she say? She says, however, this was not such a big deal as we thought it was. These changes were not really that big. That's what she said. So let's look at the options where that happens. These changes were expected to happen anyway. Did the author say they were expected to happen anyway? Did anybody expect the pandemic? And did anybody anticipate that because of the pandemic, these changes will happen? No, that is out of scope of the passage. These changes were not as drastic as they were thought to be. Yes, that's the answer. Because the author said, because when things settled down, it became clear that these decisions uh, turned out for reasons other than COVID, they were not really as big as you thought they were. Okay, so that's the answer. These changes involved a lot of regrets. Did the author say they involved a lot of regrets? No. People were badly affected. Some were, not all. But she didn't talk about how badly they were affected. She just says there were changes, there were effects, and then she talked about decision making. So the correct one is about regrets and how to reverse decisions. So the correct answer is B.